pooling layers are very useful and widely used in convolutional neural networks together with convolutional layers and fully connected layers. And the setup of the computation done in a pooling layer is conceptually speaking similar to that done in a convolutional layer with some simplified aspects to it. But in principle you have, um, as I have on this slide, you have an input presented, presented to you as a matrix and in fact it's going to be a tensor but I come back to this in just a moment. There are several channels to this but I focus on just one channel. So there is a matrix and uh, you have a filter. In, in my case there is this um, uh, filter that is uh, 3 by 3 and the idea is that um, similarly as done, is, as done in a convolutional layer computation this filter is going to scan our input and it's going to scan it, you know, starting from the top left corner, going left to right and top to bottom. And uh, we have the idea of strides. So you have the option and, and very often used, in fact, to skip some positions. And the net effect of this um, pooling layer uh, is that the size of your input is going to shrink. And, and I come back to this and argue for why this seems to be uh, useful in convolutional neural network. But here is how the um, computation um, is done. We have the uh, filter uh, coming and starting from the um, top left corner of our um, uh, input. And the type of computation that is done in a pooling layer is uh, chosen to be either uh, that of a max operation. And then we are talking about a max pool or max pooling layer or the other type of operation which is much more seldomly used but, but still useful sometimes is that of average and then we talk about an average pooling layer. And so I'm going to focus in this example um, on the far more um, you know wider used um, uh, option of a max pooling layer and if you do have indeed a max pooling layer the idea is that once you place um, the filter on top of your input you are going to take a look at the uh, uh, values in your input in that location that's covered currently by the filter. So we are looking at this gray area in our input and we simply take the maximum of the values in your input that come into this um, area covered by the filter. So if you are dealing with an average uh, pooling layer, then you take the average of these values. But let's take, this, let's take this example where we do max pooling and we take a look at these nine values and the maximum is going to be value 7. So this value 7 I'm going to write then in the output on this top left um, uh, position. So here is going to be um, 7. And then we uh, shift uh, our filter on, on the input and let's say that we deal with a stride of 2. So we are um, skipping two positions and then the filter moves um, into this location in, in our input. And then we do the same thing. We take a look at the values of the input that are currently covered by the filter and we check the max value of, um, of, of these um, nine uh, entries and the max is found here. So the max is six and I'm going to write six on this uh, position in the output. So here we write six and then we continue with our computation. Again, we have a stride of two and the filter moves here and in this location the maximum value is 7 so I'm writing 7 and then again using a stride of 2 we shift it all the way to the left but then we, we um, skip two positions uh, downwards and so the filter moves here and we check again the um, max uh, of these values and we find out that the max is 7 and we continue in the same way we shift two positions and we find out that the maximum here is, is six and and so on. So it, it continues all the way, um, you know, uh, shift by shift uh, going towards the bottom right corner. And we find out that the uh, other values of the matrix um, of, of the computation are, are these ones um, on the slide. Now, <clears throat> the reason why pooling layers are um, useful in, in convolutional neural networks is, is maybe not theoretically clear, um, uh, you know, in terms of the exact uh, contribution to the um, computation done by the convolutional neural network. Um, the intuitive reason why uh, people use it and, and they, they, they seem to make a difference in the training of a um, convolutional neural network is that um, 
they shrink your input size and so that leads to a faster training for your neural network. But the shrinking is done in a way that's consistent with detecting features. Um, and, and what I mean by that is that um, by taking, uh, for example, um, a max, but a similar uh, argument can be done also for the average. But if we think about the max, um, in this uh, input that is maybe coming from a, a previous convolutional layer, that layer was detecting um, some feature and having a high value somewhere here, it means that that feature was found in some location of, of that input. And so um, by taking this max pool layer, you are shrinking the size, you, you are uh, essentially compressing these values to a single value, but you are retaining the idea that that feature was detected. Having a high value, you pick that into your maximum and you are placing it here in the output. And so that's an indication that the feature was indeed detected. If, if the feature um, were not detected, then you would have only small values in here and that would be kind of cascaded into the uh, output and, and the indication would, would be that in that location you don't really have that feature. Your input may come on several different channels, so you might have a tensor here and that means that you are going to have such matrices on several different channels and in that case the way this um, uh, pooling layer uh, works is that you are going to do exactly the same kind of pooling computation on each one of the um, channels independently. And so the result is going to have as many channels as the input had and the computations on each channel are done uh, independently of each other. So um, I, uh, I want to just uh, point out the type of computation done in this uh, pooling layer. So the moment you set up a pooling layer, you have to choose a number of hyperparameters to, to have your letters, uh, layer set up. So on one hand, you need to choose your filter size uh, F and, and then you need to choose your stride um, S and then the type of pooling you're going to do. And typically this is either max or, or average. And then in principle, you could also choose padding, uh, although this is by far um, taken uh, in almost all cases to be uh, equal to zero. But in principle, you could also have uh, padding. But I just want to comment that um, in the vast majority of cases where you use pooling layers, the padding is going to be set up to zero. So whatever I'm com commenting on in this slide is, is assuming that P is equal to zero. But um, yeah, as, a, as, a, um, uh, as an option, you have it available if you really think that this is useful. And then the computation that's done in a pooling layer is, is this one. You have in the input um, a tensor of uh, size, width, height, and um, the number of channels. And in the input, the way you calculate this size um, is the same, um, is based on the same argument as that that we used in a convolutional layer. And so the size of the output is going to be W minus F over S plus one. Uh, if you had padding here also, it would be W plus two P minus F over S, just like we had in the convolutional layer. A very similar uh, computation done also for the height. So um, uh, H minus F over S plus one. And uh, it has exactly the same number of channels as the input. One important note to, um, to have here is that in a pooling layer, you really have a fixed computation. You just do max or you do average, depending on, on what type of pooling you decided to do. Um, and in particular, there are no parameters to learn. So adding a pooling layer doesn't add to the uh, computational effort of training the network. Um, it, it's just a fixed computation.